Good day, everybody. My name is Kevin Hogan. I'm the author of 21 books, including The Science of Influence and The Psychology of Persuasion, books that across the world have sold millions of copies in, uh, I think, 41 languages now. Today, hypnotic stories and the narrative transportation that you want to achieve when you want to achieve it. This is video two. So, we were talking last time about how to be boring or how to be captivating. And how do you accomplish that goal? And how do you really capture the listener's attention? How do you hold their attention in a hypnotic story? Well, there's five pieces that you want to look at in a boring versus a captive story. And I, had, I was touching on the first one as we closed off the last video. But here's five things that you can do. And you want to write each of these down. And every single story that you have that you're going to tell somebody, you want to make sure that they meet all of these criteria. First, will the main character of the story, perhaps it's you telling the story, or you're telling the story about a friend or somebody you saw on TV or somebody you saw out in public, whatever it is or whoever it is, you want, you want to make sure that your main character is going to either achieve his goal or make it most of the way toward achieving the goal. What is the goal? The goal is what happens when the story hits the person. Okay, the story hits the person. The person's going about their daily business. Remember last time I used the example of some disaster happening outside the house. There's a big accident or something and I have to stop videotaping for you and I go out there and listen. My goal is, is I need to make some videos for you and I have to get some cool stuff on hypnotic stories up. But am I going to achieve my goal? And when I do, after the story that now I'm telling you about the, the, uh, the accident that happened right outside the house here, um, will I be able to resolve that goal? And how does that make me a different person? How does it impact me? And how does it impact you, the listener? And what do I want you to do now that you've heard the story? Okay, so will the main character achieve the goal? Number two, at what cost and what sacrifice? I'm making this video for you today. I don't want to have to go outside and deal with somebody who's dying and bleeding out on the ground. But if it's on my ground, you got to make, you know, because can you imagine getting all that stuff off your driveway? That'd be really tough. So you got to go do it, right? So it's the cost and the sacrifice. If you have to go, I'm just kidding. You got to go, it's the cost and the sacrifice that I have to make now or that you have to make when you're telling the story. And there has to be a cost or a sacrifice or you have no story, okay? And then will it change the main character? If it's not going to change the main character in some way, the story's not worth telling. If the story you're about to tell somebody did not change the main character. Usually the main character is you as you're telling the story. If it's not going to change the main character, then don't tell the story. Simple enough. And then during a story, at some point, probably in the middle, and even as close to the end as almost to the climax of the story, which is about three quarters of the way through the story, and I'll talk about that in a later video. But you want to make sure that there's always that element of all is not as it seems. And I'll take specific stories as we go through this video series, and I'll walk you through specific examples of all is not that it seems. But basically, it has to be somewhat apparent that I'm leaving out a critical detail. Something is missing. This is what all humor comes from is this piece, but it's way more than humor. This is the mysterious piece. This is the puzzle piece that solves the, uh, the, the problem for Sherlock or all of the detectives or CSI or whoever, right? And then finally, number five, you've got to be able to get your listener to see the big picture at each step of your story. As, as you walk through the story, you've just got to give that listener a reminder of the big picture. So today, in my example that I was using, there's an accident outside the house. I need to get these videos done for you. It's super important. They got to get up on YouTube today so I can show them to you. I need to show them. Why do I need to show them? Because we've got a super important new uh, e-course coming out about storytelling, which is super in-depth, super awesome, absolutely the coolest thing ever created on stories. But I'll never get it done if I don't go and take care of the problem outside the house. But that's that's going to change me too when I go do that. And you need a, the big picture, by the way, is getting the video series done for you. It's not what happens outside the house. That's just part of the story. You have to be aware of how this is shaping the, the big picture the whole way through, is this experience that we're having right now. So once again, if you have these pieces, the person is going to be less likely to evaluate your story, which you don't want. You don't need a critic. You want a listener. You want a ravenous, rabid, captivated, 
person listening that can't wait to tell your story to someone else. You want to make sure that they don't scrutinize your message. You want to make sure that there is narrative transportation. And if, if there is, if you, if you have successfully allowed the listener to consume your story, then they won't scrutinize the message. It won't have critical thought attached to it. Remember, if the person is familiar with the backdrop of your story or some element of your story, um, I mentioned an art fair. I know nothing about art. If you told the story about an art fair, you'd probably lose me in the first second. The story could be like a murder victim happening, but I'm not at the art fair. Okay, So you have to change the story. You have to change the topic. You were at a public event outside, a charity auction or something like that, something I could associate with, still not changing the fact that it was an art fair, but you want to make sure that the backdrop is such that I can get the big picture of where you were in my mind right away. So if I know about art fairs, cool, and if I don't, you can't tell it. You got to make sure that I have familiarity with your topic, with the genre that you're telling the story in, and also the culture. Super important. We'll be going more there later as well. You've got to be certain to it. Grab my attention immediately. Grab my attention immediately, and then you have to captivate. You must motivate me to listen to the story. You're talking now and you have seconds to capture my attention, seconds. That requires focused attention. In other words, I have to be able to get you into the story so well that you don't hear anything else that's going on outside you. Just like you might be aware of sounds now, but you weren't before. And then finally, I have to make sure that not only do I do everything I can as your storyteller to cause you to avoid distraction, I have to make sure that you are avoiding distractions too by giving you instructions during the story. Like, imagine this, and then here's what happened. Can you picture that? Can you see that? Can you hear that? I mean, can you feel it? Any of those kind of little little nuances there that bring the person to actually touching or feeling or integrating into the story creates an identification piece that's absolutely unbeatable. And finally, for today, for this specific video, transportability comes from empathy. And remember that if you want to have a truly hypnotic story, that listener of yours must resonate with the main character. If it's you or whoever it is, it might be even them. But whatever the story you're telling is, they must resonate with the main character and feel what they're feeling and want that person to feel better, get well, accomplish their goal, get where they need to be. That's your goal. That's how you know you're going to succeed or fail.